Good evening. Due to the COVID-19 emergency, tonight's committee of adjustment hearing is being held by video conference and live streaming video on the town's live stream webpage at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variance and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca and if you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The phone number is also posted on your screen below the live stream at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call. When you do call in, staff will ask you for your name, item number that you wish to address, and your telephone number. Further instructions will be provided to you to call back and join the video conference. When the chair of the committee polls the interested parties, the secretary treasurer will unmute you when it is your time to speak. The applicant or agent will be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for a presentation. You will need to state your full name and address for the record. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must state their name, full name, address for the record, and a maximum of five minutes will be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will then be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be provided a further five minutes to respond to the comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the applicant or agent has any concerns beyond uh, found in the staff report, particularly in any proposed conditions, this will be the opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision, and this will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of decision for an application must provide a written request, preferably through email, to the secretary treasurer. Please note that you must make a written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the local planning appeal tribunal for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice for the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variance and 15 days for consent applications to the applicant, agent, and any other person who filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the local planning appeal tribunal, and the last date to appeal the decision to the local planning appeal tribunal will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding, and the secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in this hearing are to be courteous to, respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and other people participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at oakville.ca. Thank you. So, tonight we have no regrets. Do I have any declaration of pecuniary interests? I see none, thank you. And at this time, uh, Ms. McRae will be taking a request for deferral or withdrawal of applications. Do we have um, anyone standing by to request a deferral? Yes, I believe Mr. Capper is standing by to request a deferral. Good evening, Mr. Capper. Let me just read the, um, the item number in record. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I'd like to request a deferral for CABA 057-2020, and that's the application for the municipal address uh, 412 Watson Avenue. Uh, our clients have been in discussions with some of the neighboring property owners, and there have been some concerns that have been raised. Um, so we'd like to take the opportunity to see if we can revise the 
proposal to mitigate some of the con con concerns that have been raised. Um, and we'd like to have a chance to work with staff to, to resolve these matters. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Kapper. Ms. McRae, there is no one else uh, online that wishes to speak to this matter, correct? Um, for that application, I, I don't show anybody else online waiting to speak to that application. Okay. Okay, thank you. Members, I'm in your hands. Uh, Mr. Kapper is seeking a deferral to further uh, look into the application and see how he can work with the neighbors. All those in support of a deferral? Okay. Mr. Kapper, your uh, application has been deferred. Thank you for your submission. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night. You too. Are there any other uh, deferrals waiting? I do not see anybody else asking, um, raising their hand to request a deferral at this time. Okay, very well. We have no uh, consent applications. The first item on our agenda for this evening is CAV 040 of 2020 at 112 Elton Park Drive. Uh, any members in the uh, public that are interested in speaking to this application, application CAV 040 of 2020 at 112 Elton Park Drive, are asked to call the phone number 905-815-6095. The number again is 905-815-6095. Uh, the phone number is also posted on your screen below the live stream at oakville.ca. Staff will be on standby to take your call and further instructions will be provided to you to join the video conference at that time. Ms. McRae, do we have the applicant or agent standing by for this application? Uh, the agent and the homeowner um, are online waiting to speak. Okay. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. My name is Marin Zabzuni. I'm the agent for 112 Elton Park uh, Road. Good evening, Mr. Zabzuni. So we're applying for a two-story uh, detached dwelling. The application, we initially had it uh, booked for March uh, for Committee of Adjustment. We deferred in order to reduce the variances uh, and even eliminate some. Uh, we worked with city staff and we've been working through this project for quite a long time and uh, trying to uh, accommodate uh, zoning and um, the area. So I think we've come to a really good conclusion now. We're asking for only two minor variances. And we've also spoken with uh, neighbors in the area and they, they support us uh, for this application. We've submitted letters of support through the treasurer, secretary treasurer. And um, please let me know if we, you have any questions. Perfect. You, do you have anything submitted that you'd like to uh, town staff to put up on our screen? Uh, if you require uh, an explanation or a review, then no problem. We can put up the, the rendering or the drawings. Okay, I see Mr. Uh, Talowski's hand up. Go ahead, sir. And Ms. Murray. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just, I'm seeking some clarification from the applicant. Uh, we've got a very unique staff report that supports the application but doesn't support the application uh, so before i get to address that probably later uh, just for the applicant sir are you um, here tonight seeking approval of your original plan or are you seeking to amend the plan as staff has suggested we have already amended the plan with the revised drawings um, and revised variances. So we would like to move forward with the latest set of drawings that are submitted. And in terms of the um, commenting on the planning report, uh, if I can, if we can bring up the rendering, uh, maybe it can better illustrate our unique design, dynamic design details to make sure that a lot of attention to detail was put in and that it's not at all just a box. And I can better illustrate that with the rendering on that we submitted. Yes, so I don't know if you can zoom in, but essentially uh, there's a lot of different details going on here where we have 
um, cantilevered uh, brake on an angle at the top left. Um, we have a cantilevered uh, flat roof porch. Uh, the garage wall comes out at a different material. And, uh, you know, this corner window, a good mix of materials that complement each other and really good landscaping, warm elements with the wood and stone, natural elements. So there's a lot going on with this where it makes it unique and dynamic. And uh, we spent a lot of time on it. We wanted to make sure that it's not just a flat surface and there's a lot of different uh, details at different dimensions. And sometimes it's not illustrated as much through uh, architectural plans and elevations that are flat and orthographic. That's why we submitted this uh, photorealistic rendering. I'm not sure if planning got a chance to review this one, but this is where we stand, where we feel that, you know, the house is quite dynamic. It's not just one surface. There's a lot going on that complement the design and the space. And it's something that the owner, you know, has been requesting um, and, and we've been working together with the city and everyone involved. And I think it's, it's an appropriate application. Okay, um, I can't see everyone, but I, I know from previous that Ms. Murray had a question. Have those questions been answered or would you like to ask the agent for uh, any further items of clarification? Um, further area of uh, clarification to you, Madam Chair, um, with regards to a question for the town staff. Um, uh, recommendations with regards to the town staff, notwithstanding what's been presented tonight, indicate uh, approval uh, and a revised elevation drawings to the satisfaction of the manager of urban design and director of planning services. Um, could I get a clarification from town staff on that? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, it'd be very similar to how we treat applications that go through site plan for properties along the lake. In this situation, we'd be dealing with the two minor variances, one for garage floor area and mainly the, I guess, um, issue in regards to the condition that you're speaking of is the variance for residential floor area. So through a review of the application, we didn't have the renderings of all sides of the dwelling. That rendering that was just shown is just the front elevation. And in terms of the architectural drawings, through review with urban design staff, we wanted to have some more mix of materials to break down that visual scale and massing that we saw from the architectural drawing. So that's kind of where the intent of the condition came from. So it wouldn't drastically change the look of the building. It would just, again, introduce another element to it that would in er, the urban design guidelines and, and meet those criteria. Mr. Tulowski, you had uh, something to add? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, back to Mr. Hassan. Uh, I'm having great difficulty with your recommendations here because you're effectively asking the committee to approve a variance and then after it's approved the site plan and all the elevations are going to be revised no opportunity for the committee to see those no opportunity for the public to see those and i don't understand how conditions are appropriate you have one part of the planning department saying approve it and another division saying we want a total redesign. Yeah, and through you, Madam Chair, again, staff don't anticipate that it'll be drastic changes. It would just be, again, incorporating single story elements as we do in other applications to reduce visually how the box is shown from the architectural plans. So basically the, um the variance that's being approved, uh, the, let me reverse that. The, any amendments that you make to the facade of the home has no bearing on the variance that is being sought. That's what you're saying. It's just aesthetics that you're asking for them to amend once this variance has been approved. Yeah, through you, Madam, Madam Chair, that'd be correct. Okay, um, Ms. Murray, you had further, uh, uh, questions? I do follow up through you, Madam Chair, to town planning staff. Um, that having been said, we have to um, uh, apply the the all, all four tests of the, of the Planning Act under Section 45.1. And the variances, um, while they meet the four tests, apparently under the Planning Act, one of the things that is striking to me that does not meet the test 
is um, um, is the application desirable for the appropriate development of the lands in question and considering the massing and having done conducted my site visit and I've seen the other homes um, that 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 does not appear to be in line and and further notwithstanding um, support from 124 Elton Park, 131 Elton Park, 118 Elton Park, and, and 1031 Lakeshore. Um, having seen the property, um, there may be letters of support simply because the property has become an eyesore and they're happy to see it redeveloped. Um, but for me, at this point in time, I don't see how it meets all four tests um, based on the massing. Perhaps, perhaps the town could town staff could help me out with that yeah again and uh, through you madam chair in the staff report we tried to identify where the variance falls in relation from going from 29 percent to 33.46 percent so based on the lot area internally the 19.27 square meters visually wouldn't really cause additional mass and scale issues in relation to the surrounding area so that's where we were coming from in terms of supporting the application but making those visual exterior changes um, to reduce um, the boxy design in terms of the bill form. M Madam Chair, follow up. Um, the comments do note, though, that staff recommend modifications be made in order to break up the box into single story elements. I don't see those in those drawings. So uh, reasonably speaking, I think we should have it returned to committee at a time such that that has been addressed. Can, can I ask why town staff did not ask for revised plans ahead of tonight's meeting? Um, usually when we don't have um, revised plans that we're going to approve, um, we either defer or we ask the applicant to take us through it if it's something very minor, but we have a tendency to ask them to defer. So what happened there? Uh, through Madam Chair, in terms of the design elements, staff did not feel that there would be an overhaul in terms of the uh, design as a whole. So that's kind of where we were coming from in terms of preparing the recommended uh, condition itself. Again, we sort of tried to compare it to how site plans are dealt with. Again, when they're going through the process, they're either on their first or second submission. They come in for the variances to establish those zone regulations, and then they slowly work through um, the site plan process um, with urban design staff, the planner on the file. And sometimes there are architectural changes that aren't shown on the plans that are submitted to the committee because the final approved plans are to the satisfaction of the director of planning services in accordance with the final approved site plan. So. That's kind of where we saw this um, going in terms of formulating the staff recommendation. So while I understand that you, and I, I see Ms. Marais and Mr. Talowski's point that we are teetering in, in between, uh, is it massing or it's not? Um, is it your submission now that you are, the town is in full support of this application and that you just wanted to give us a, an overall picture, but you are more on the side of it being uh, appropriate for the development of the land and without negative impact on adjacent properties. Well, no, Madam Chair, I think that the comments would still stand. Staff would still like to see, again, a breakdown in the boxy uh, frame of the actual proposed built form in terms of materials and um, one story elements, um, as Member Murray had noted from an exterior, okay. po exterior point of view. Okay, um, I did see the applicant's uh, hand go up, uh, um, seeing as though you are, you are registered and this is your time. Um, you, you can address the committee, sir, if you had something to add. Yes, I do. Good evening. Uh, my name is Vladimir Prakai. Uh, that guy is there talking to you, Brandon. We submitted the drawing two times and he was okay five, six months ago with the architect. Now, the day is supposed to have committee, he's gonna have to change the box. He gotta change the word box. 
because they have a lot of boxes around okay, there. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. Um, the first onset in this meeting, we've asked for applicants and uh, individuals to be respectful. So I will have you address, no, no, sir, I'm talking. I will have you address Mr. Hassan as Mr. Hassan and not okay, that Mr. guy. Hassan. And you will speak in a polite tone as per our procedure and our conduct. If you are unable to control yourself and your tone, I will ask that you refrain from speaking. Well, the computer has got a loud voice, so sorry about that. Okay. It's maybe so, the computer. So I don't, I don't think that Mr. Hassan is backtracking. I think they still want to see elements um, that soften up the design of the home, and this is why we're having this discussion. Do you have anything further to add before we um, address the committee? Because once I've taken you off, then you will not be able to say anything uh, further. Well, this meeting is for me tonight, I, I think so. I'm sorry? This meeting is for me tonight or for... No, no, no. We are on your application. I'm just saying that as per our procedural bylaws, I'm giving you a chance to speak, and I interrupted you because of the tone and the demeanor that was being presented. And I'd like to give you back your time in order for you to finish addressing the committee before we take the matter into committee for a decision. So do you have anything further to add before I end the time frame that you have to speak, which is typically five minutes? Well, I, I, I have a, a couple questions for Mr. Hassan. What do you say for the box? The house is not boxy. Um, you have to address the questions to uh, the, the chairman of the committee, which is myself. Um, and then we will have Mr. Hassan respond to you. So your only question that remains is what they mean by the word box in the town staff notes, which you received on Friday. Yes, Am I correct to understand your question? Yeah, I do have questions. So I, what we submitted like about six, seven months ago, I'm not sure, like was it February or early February, where we present all these papers with uh, Mr. Zabzuni there. And then uh, he was okay a couple of times making some changes. It was okay. So now he's calling the house boxy. So I don't understand. We, the house is not boxy. It's one quarter, two story. A lot of houses in neighborhood are two story. Like... Uh, I don't want to make a bungalow there. If I want to make a bungalow, and I will make a bungalow. I don't have a lot of coverage to go to bust, uh, boom the house in and out too many times. I, I, There's it's no room in the lot. Okay. Uh, is that is that all your submissions, That's sir, so I that have. we can take into committee? Okay. Mr. Zabzuni, do you have anything further to add before I have Mr. Hassan address? Yes, yeah, so the lot is, uh, even though it's a corner lot, um, it's, a, it's somewhat narrow for this type of lot where we don't have much room at the front and back, uh, other than triggering issues with forestry, with transportation, um, and those setbacks. So with that said, um, I believe Mr. Hassan mentioned he didn't quite see the, the our latest rendering, so maybe um, he reviewed the previous kind of flat drawings and had that interpretation, which I can understand with with two D drawings uh, reviewing that. However, with as we had the rendering shown up front, there is uh, quite a few materials. This was one of the points from planning is to you know not have it plain, not have it boxy. There's quite a few materials introduced um, that was our goal in the very beginning, and the reason we did this realistic rendering was to easily and visualize that, demonstrate that. And we have one story portions with the garage um, coming forward with the roofs line, with an angled roof line. There's quite a few unique elements. Uh, th there's a second floor cantilever at the back too. So it's not just the front. We've you know been waiting patiently um, uh, among the pandemic to get through this committee where we already deferred, uh, we've made changes, we've reduced, and we've added, we want this design to be special in Oakville to complement it and add to the curb appeal. And uh, we believe it, it meets the fourth test and it's very fitting among many of the modern homes that are already there. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of trees on site too. And uh, we would really like your request or, of approval for this application as we've been working very hard on making it fit the, the lot in the area. And, uh, you know, we feel strongly that it does. And I hope you can see that. Okay, thank you for your submission. And as per our procedural bylaws, when we have a discussion about the conditions in town staff's report, this is the time for you to explain yourself. And I, I appreciate um, your forthcoming with us. And I believe Mr. Hassan um, did mention that he, he would like to see the renderings of the other sides of the home. And I'll let him further uh, clarify before we take this matter into committee. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, I think the only uh, note that needs to be clarified is when I did meet initially with the applicant, um, it was pointed out to me that, again, there would be a residential floor area variance and a garage area variance. I believe when they submitted, zoning staff identified upwards of 13 deficiencies with regards to the zoning bylaw. So in terms of discussions with staff, that's where those conversations were held. Um, I believe, again, this item was scheduled for the March 31st agenda, but was pulled because of the long list of deficiencies and the changes that need to be made at that time. Okay. Um, members uh, of the committee, do you have any further questions of Mr. Zabzuni or Mr. Hassan at this time um, or items of clarification before we do take this matter into committee? I see none. Okay. Who would like to uh, start the ball rolling? Ms. Murray, go ahead. Um. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, having conducted my site visit, reviewed the application's written submission as well as the town's uh, written staff report, um, which I note that the staff has taken note of um, design guidelines, particularly the following sections, 3.13 with regards to scale and 3.21, which is massing. Um, I am making a motion that the application be, be denied at this time. Um, uh, Okay, is there a discussion on this uh, uh, recommendation? Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is clearly a very unique application where the applicant does not want to proceed in accordance with the recommended conditions uh, <clears throat> put forth by staff. And staff are asking the committee to approve a plan it's never seen and you know, I, I feel I need to quote from the staff report. The urban design calls it a simple box and that the guidelines require the design to include significant projections and or recesses, single level building elements, variation in roof lines, subdividing the larger building into smaller elements, etc. And yet the committee's been told that uh, staff think that can be accomplished with some minor tweaks. That's not possible, Madam Chair. In order to satisfy those urban design requirements, this plan would come back substantially altered. And I, I do not believe it's appropriate for the committee to approve something that it hasn't seen that's likely to change significantly, that the public would have no opportunity to see and in terms of the uh, approval of the applicant seeking, they're asking for an additional 600 square feet approximately. And there's been no effort at all to try to mitigate the impact of that. The, it is very much a two-story box. It's not compatible with the neighborhood and I will fully support Ms. Murray's motion. Okay, so the motion before us is to deny, to deny the application as it fails to meet the, uh, the requirements under the uh, Planning and uh, Act. Um, all those in support? Okay. All, none opposed. Okay, so your application has been uh, denied, Mr. Zerbuni, and we um, will have you uh, contact uh, staff and take it from there. The application uh, on um, lost it. the next application 
is CAV056 of 2020 at 479 Avon Crescent. If there are any uh, members of the public that wish to speak to this application, CAV056 of 2020 at 479 Avon Crescent, we'd like you to call the number 905-815. 6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The phone number is also posted uh, below the live stream feed at opro.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call and further instructions will be provided to you uh, to call and join the video conference. At this time, Ms. McRae, do we have the agent for application CAV056 present? Uh, yes, the agent, Mr. Chris Merrill. Oh, hi. Oh, and the homeowner is also available. Okay. Mr. Milboro, correct? Am I pronouncing it correctly? You have to unmute yourself. You're on mute. Perfect. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Okay, good evening. Do you have a presentation for us that you'd like town staff to upload? Uh, I did submit uh, two slides, uh, basically a graphic representation of the lot areas that we have to use the calculation versus the total lot area. Yes. Yes, uh, we recognize that uh, staff is of support, but we'd like to see the, the presentation given the, the incredible <laughs> difference uh, in RFA, but we understand through staff notes that uh, the constraints are because of conservation halt and constraints on your lot. But I think for the benefit of the public, seeing as though we are in these virtual meetings, it's it's important that we show the material that we have and take sure. advantage of presenting it. So this is your time, sir. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, Madam Chair, um, for the property at four seventy nine Avon Crescent, this is actually. Uh, we're, we're reapplying for a variance that was previously approved two years ago that uh, ended up lapsing just to due to some unforeseen circumstances. However, the homeowner is now proceeding. Um, so we're reapplying essentially for the same two variances. Uh, one variance being for uh, an increase in the floor area, lot area ratio. So as you can see on the, on the screen in front of you, the area we're allowed to use to calculate the floor area ladder ratio is actually about half of the actual lot size. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why the it looks like we're applying for some vast number of increase uh, in area. But in actuality, if we were to take the full lot above water, because there is a creek involved, there would be no variance required for this property. Um, and the scale of the, the building is very similar to some of the newer developments that have been going on in that neighborhood. Uh, and similarly, on the, on the second slide, which would show the lot coverage, uh, again, the area that we're required to use, again, it's a, it's a split zone lot, which is another unique character of the property. We're required to only use the area in the RL3 zone to calculate the lot coverage. And again, that's only about two thirds of the actual property size in which normally we would be uh, able to um, calculate the lot coverage for. Uh, so in, in our opinion and also in staff opinion, uh, we feel that the variance is minor. It's uh, justifiable, it's, the scale is appropriate. Uh, the design fits within the new modern looks that are going up everywhere. And therefore we ask that you uh, approve the variances as we've requested. Okay, thank you, Mr. Milbor. Are there any questions or items of clarification of the applicant or agent at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, Ms. McRae, there has uh, been no calls requesting to speak to this application, correct? Uh, at this time, I see uh, no calls. Okay, very well. So then, Mr. Milborough, if you are satisfied with your submission and the uh, conditions that are found in staff's uh, report, uh, we're ready to take the matter into committee. Okay. Okay, very well. Who would like to uh, make a motion? Mr. Flemington, go ahead, sir. Madam Chair, having conducted uh, my site visit and reviewing the application that has been applied for, 
Uh, also noting that the uh, town's uh, staff's written report is in support of the application. Um, also taking into account uh, the presentation this evening, uh, demonstrating that this was also an application that had been approved previously, finding that it does meet all of the tests of the Planning Act. And uh, also noting that uh, we received one letter in support I would like to move a motion that it be approved as applied for uh, with the following conditions that the dwelling and cabana be built in general accordance with the submitted site plans dated June 20th, 2019 and elevation drawings dated May 19th, 2020, as well as our standard condition uh, that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Oh, sorry. Mr. Hardcastle, did you have your hand up for discussion? Uh, I'm satisfied with a going for motion, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry I missed your hand. Okay, uh, so the motion is to approve subject to the conditions uh, as read on record. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So uh, application CAV 058 of 2020 at uh, 1104 Forest Manor Gate. Um, anyone interested in speaking to this application, um, we ask you to call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The phone number is also posted uh, on the screen below the live stream feed. Staff will be standing by to take your call, and when you do call in, further instructions will be provided for you to join the video conference. Again, the application uh, that we are um, discussing right now is application CAV 058-2020 at 1104 Forest Manor Gate. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair. It's John Wilmot, and I'm the architect and the agent for the owners. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Wilmot. Uh, Norma and Paul Marchetti, uh, who are attending virtually tonight, I believe. Uh, Emily Vea of my office, who's also been handling the, the, this file, is also monitoring the proceedings. Um, we're before you uh, this evening to request three variances uh, related to the design of a proposed new accessory pool cabana uh, located in the rear yard of the property, um, which is beyond the location of the, uh, the current swimming pool, so it's behind it. Um, two of the variances uh, that are supported by planning staff include, uh, in reverse order, uh, number three, which is to legalize the side yard setback of an uh, existing tool shed, uh, and number two, to allow an increase, a uh, small increase in the proposed building height of, of the proposed structure from four meters to 4.4 meters. Uh, I trust the committee uh, also finds these two uh, variances to be minor in nature. Uh, much of my presentation will be spent on item number one to permit the pool house to be used for uh, human habitation, uh, which is not permitted under the zoning bylaw and not supported by planning staff. Um, when our clients came to us to design the pool cabana, their goal was to be able to uh, uh, use the structure for a number of activities related to their uh, private enjoyment um, uh, adjacent to the swimming pool. Um, these activities, such as sitting out in the sun using it uh, in cooler or inclement weather, entertaining, uh, enjoying meals, and for the convenience of having a, a bathroom nearby when, when swimming. In, uh, in the zoning bylaw, section 6.5.1b uh, states that an accessory building or structure shall not be used for human habitation uh, or an occupation, sorry, uh, an occupation for gain or profit unless otherwise permitted by this bylaw. Is our understanding, uh, we've uh, had past applications of similar uh, uh, situations. Um, staff has stated that the intent of this section was uh, uh, to prevent an accessory building uh, from being used as a second dwelling unit. That's the, their, that's been their major concern about uh, that clause. Um, so in the recent past, we've successfully designed uh, similar accessory buildings, most notably 145 William Street, which included the same amenities such as a bathroom, heat sources, and, and generous rooms. 
Uh, in this case, the committee approved a variance to permit uh, the, the use of human habitation and their uh, justification for approval in that they stated uh, that it was granted because the proposed accessory building is to be used as uh, an additional living space for the property owner's family and not as an additional dwelling unit or rental unit. So this situation is, is uh, very similar. Uh, our client has described in a letter to the committee uh, that the use of this structure is for personal use and emphatically confirms that the uh, accessory building will not be used for a second dwelling unit or a rental accommodation. Uh, staff have raised some concerns that uh, because of the large enclosed area, the fireplace and uh, what's they call a bar area and a bathroom, that the building has the potential to become an accessory dwelling unit and is habitable space. Now the bathroom is intended for uh, uh, to be fully functioning uh, as a as an accessory to the pool. Um, the the house that uh, the house is fairly far away, and uh, and it would be uh, it's designed for convenience um, for the pool. Um, the uh, the fireplace is intended uh, for ambience primarily and to occasionally take the chill off, but it's not intended to adequately serve as a code compliant heat source for a dwelling unit, especially given the heat loss from uh, from all the glass. Uh, also, the serving counter is not a functioning kitchen, nor does it have cooking facilities. It would take significant modifications to become a dwelling unit. Uh, if I could ask the secretary treasurer to refer to item nine. Or, uh, on page nine, please. It's a it's a form that was sent in. Can we please have the presentation? Thank you. Okay, so I'm not sure if that's terribly clear, but so that last item was the one I was looking for. That one. Oh no, keep going. Uh, well, I think it's page nine. It's the form entitled property owner single dwelling unit affirmation. That's that's it. Um, I, I bring this uh, to your attention because, um, as you can see, uh, this is a, a commonly required uh, form uh, by the town uh, in the building department to be provided by the owner and is submitted at the time of building permit application, uh, affirming that a structure will not be used as a secondary dwelling unit. And our client would be pleased to sign this form should the variance be granted and we would be open to the committee making it a condition of approval. Um, if the secretary treasurer could show the satellite photo on page two, please, of the presentation. Thank you. Uh, Satellite image shows the location of the proposed pool cabana. It's the, basically where the red uh, marking is, uh, and uh, it gives you a, a good uh, uh, understanding of, uh, you know, what the context is um, for the surrounding area. Um, the uh, uh, the rear of the property abuts a, uh, a, a public uh, trail uh, and a ravine. So there's no impact uh, uh, from from a building uh, that's also hidden by trees. Um, the uh, stars uh, on the green stars show the uh, uh, the neighbors who are in support of the variances submitted. Uh, they've all submitted support letters. Um, so they don't share the planning staff's opinion that there will be any adverse impacts by allowing the Chetty family to inhibit inhabit the structure for their personal enjoyment and use. So we're not aware of any neighbors who object uh, to the proposal. So in closing, uh, if this structure was designed as a secondary dwelling unit, it would be difficult for me to stand here, stand here sit here and, uh, and present and suggest it meets uh, the four tests of the Planning Act. But this is a simple build, building, um, albeit nicely designed if I don't say so myself, uh, to be used as an extension of the backyard space and to be enjoyed by the family. And for that reason, I do submit that the proposal is in keeping with the official plan and zoning bylaw. It is desirable uh, and appropriate development, and the variances are minor. So with that, I'll, I'll uh, finish off, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any of the committee's questions. Okay. Mr. Talowski, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Wilmot, there's a number of cabanas that come before the committee without the request to 
permit uh, it to be used for human habitation. What would be the impact to your clients if that variance uh, was not approved? To you, Mr. Chair, or Madam Chair, uh, it would be significant. Uh, the The use uh, is to extend the, uh, the the use of the the backyard in the season um, to uh, to provide storage for the, through the winter um, to uh, to uh, have a, another living space uh, to to enjoy uh, near the pool, uh, which can't be done really from the uh, from the house, the way the pool is located, so it would be significant. Ms. Murray, uh, Mr. Talowski, you had a follow up. I'll just have Ms. Murray uh, ask her question. Go ahead. Um, I, I yield to Mr. Talowski so he can follow up in his train of thought, and then I will follow. Thank you. Okay, very well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my other question is uh, you're aware. Wilmot uh, variances don't uh, go with the owner or tenant of a property and uh, I know you've stated in your letter your clients don't uh, intend on using it for a success for unit but um, if the variance is permitted to allow it to be used uh, what protection is there that the any subsequent owner wouldn't uh, use it for an accessory apartment well, to do so, uh, through Madam Chair, uh, first of all, it would be legal. So you'd be presupposing that uh, somebody is going to commit an illegal act. Um, and uh, in order to do so, there are requirements under the building code and uh, under the zoning bylaw by which uh, if one was going to uh, create uh, such a unit that you would need a, a building permit uh, to to turn that into a, a, a dwelling unit. So um, I don't think that we can uh, uh, perfectly guard against uh, all of, uh, you know, any illegal act, but um, there, there, there would be a, a, a situation where, you know, anything that would turn it into a dwelling unit without a permit would be a, a, an illegal act. So. Who has a further follow-up, Mr. Slowski? Thank you, Madam Chair. But Mr. Wilmot, you're asking us to legalize the use. So if it could legally be used for habitation, then I would have to believe it would get a building permit. And I'm not quite understanding your line there. Well, uh, you, you could get a building permit for the uh, design as presented, but they, there is no kitchen and to be a habitable uh, a, a, a dwelling unit or a secondary dwelling unit there there are it has to have a kitchen for one so somebody would have to uh, put a kitchen into it they would have to put a, a, a proper heating and ventilating uh, uh, system into it uh, they would have to um, um, ensure that there was uh, you know, access, parking, all kinds of different things. Uh, and uh, the town has processes for allowing these types of dwelling units. So um, I, I don't see that there is a, a risk of that happening. Or a significant risk anyway. Uh, Mr. Tosky, you're satisfied, I'll pass it to Ms. Murray. Um, thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I have a question for Mr. Wilmot. Um, Mr. Wilmot, can you delineate uh, where the fence is, please, on the drawings um, between the shed and the pool? Where the fence is between the shed and the pool? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, there is, there is no, there is no uh, fence between the shed and the pool. There isn't. Okay. All right. So I don't know. Um, so the, 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 sh the shed is on closer to the pool and the fence is on the other side. Yes. I, I, if the, uh, the existing shed, I think. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The existing shed. I, I, I am so sorry. I was thinking, <laughs> uh, the shed is, uh, closer to the, uh, house. If, uh, 
the secretary treasurer could put up the site plan, I could indicate it if you like. Please and thank you, yeah. So um, on this drawing, uh, it's a darker outline um, uh, to the left of the screen. Uh, there's a little tree in front of it. Uh, it's the, uh, just the corner of the, um, the, uh, the shed on the um, mostly north, but north uh, westerly corner of the yep. shed. That is... Uh, and uh, through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Wilmot, can you please share with me where the fence is then for the for the pool the uh the fence is uh enclosing the backyard um and there is no uh fence surrounding um the pool um okay we're we're going to come back to that uh, madam chair through you to staff um, if I could uh, prevail upon uh, staff's expertise to give me a definition of what constitutes a shed and what constitutes an accessory building, please. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, if you give me one second, I'll pull up those definitions as I didn't outline them in the staff report. Thank you. Um, sorry for the delay, I just had some troubles loading the PDF. So an accessory building or structure means a building or structure used for an accessory purpose, including a detached private garage. Um, and there's a definition of private garage uh, that is located on the same lot as the primary use building or structure. So in that situation, um, for a shed being accessory to a dwelling, it'd be a house. And um, so that's A, and then B is, is not used for human habitation or an occupation for gain or profit unless otherwise permitted by this bylaw. So that would be the definition of accessory building or structure. Okay, thank you. So um, at this point in time, this question is either for Mr. Wilmot or for the homeowners. Having conducted my site visit, and I, 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 I hope you can, you can see this, but that pretty much looks like an accessory building. It is already on the property. Yeah. Um, there is no minor variance that has been requested for it. And indeed it is behind a second fence, Mr. Wilmot. So there are two fences, um, one at the entry to the backyard and, a, and another fence for, for the pool. Um, so I'm wondering why this doesn't suffice at this point in time for the storage and 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 for su for some of the needs that have been explained save for the washroom and other items in human habitation uh through you mr chair, madam chair uh i do apologize uh in in our uh landscaping uh in early landscape plans the fence was going to be considered to be changed. So that's why I, it's not showing on my site plan. There, the, there is a variance for that shed. Uh, it's the, it's the setback variance number, uh, uh, number three, uh, that was requested. Uh, it's, the shed has been there a long time. So there is a variance for that, um, to legalize the existing condition. Okay. So just to clarify, you're asking for a variance for something that 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 exists without the appropriate variance in place. Correct. Um, 
I guess you'd word it that way. There, Thank you. Thank you. There's an existing. Yeah, it, it was it was uh, it was highlighted by town staff in our pre uh, pre consultation meeting, uh, and and that that should be uh, included uh, through this application. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have any more questions. So, um, Mr. Roman, can you highlight what the existing shed is being used for at the present time? Um, I, I believe there is some pool equipment in there. Um, I, I know the owner is, uh, I think, probably on standby there, and they may be able to uh, give us a little more detail on that. If we could bring them in. I believe that's them waiting on the phone. Yes, yeah, I, I do show them on the phone. I think they'll have to unmute themselves, though. Are they on a phone or are they on their computer as well? Do you know, Mr. Wilmot? I am not. I'm not certain. There we go. Hello. Sorry about that. I apologize. Is Ms. Marchetti no, no, no. online right now? Hello. Uh, so, um, Madam Chairperson, I just wanted to. So, we're just addressing the shed that we've had there since 2006 now. Um, and I believe that uh, you're looking for what we use the shed for, which is typically just like pool toys and uh, our snowblower in the summer and our and our lawnmower in the winter. Um, it doesn't really have a lot of storage space in the shed, um, but uh, it's packed to the gills um, usually. So, oh, is there any other questions I can answer with that? In the winter, we store uh, patio equipment there, patio furniture. Okay. Um, are there any questions of Mr. and Mrs. Marchetti at this time? Okay. Thank you for your submission. Um, any questions of Mr. Wilmot at this time from the committee members before we take the matter into committee? Ms. McCray, I believe there's no one else online waiting to speak to this application, correct? That is correct. Okay, so then we are ready to take the matter into committee. Um, Mr. Romont, are there any questions, members, before we, we take the matter into committee? Okay, I see none, so we will go ahead and do that. Who would like to start the discussion on a recommendation? Ms. Murray, go ahead. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, uh, having conducted my site visit, reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is not in support of um, the habitable conditions of the accessory building. Uh, having also taken into account the comments presented by the applicant and by Mr. Wilmot, um, as well as the um, comments and questions uh, from panel members, um, uh, I, I, I am prepared to, um, like I said, make a motion that the application be denied at this time, as it, um, uh, as it is, does not meet the four tests of the act at this time. Okay. Was there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay. I see none. All those in support of the denial of the application? Okay. All those opposed? Okay. So the application, uh, the this motion fails. The, as with I three. She's the only one, but these two didn't deny it. But so they, they agreed. I don't want to mute. Oh. You, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, sorry, you have to mute yourself. So, Ms. McRae? I'm not... Was Mr. Tulowski's hand up in support of the denial or not? No, okay. He, you. you were supporting the denial, correct? Okay. Yes, it's mine. Okay. And who was it against? Can I, can I just see a show of hands again because we didn't see the hands? Okay, 
So against the denial. Okay, so it's it failed three to two. Um, who would like to make another motion? And I, in the meantime, I'll have you um, you um, think about it. Mr. Hassan, I have a question for you with respect to the uh, form that the applicant is willing to sign with respect to the uh, habitable um, attesting that it's not habitable. Um, can we um, add that to the conditions and, and how would you um, put it in for it to your satisfaction if, if that was something that we would consider? Through you, Madam Chair. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with that exact letter template that uh, Mr. Wilmot had shown. It may be something that the building department uses. However, under the Planning Act regulations, there would have to be a minor variance agreement entered into. So that'd be under Section 45 of the Act in order for any sort of declarations or drawings or plans to be registered and um, binded on title to carry okay. with the future property owners. Okay, I, I, I would like that to be uh, um, part of our decision for tonight. So how, how do we go about doing that? Um, so a condition would be that the owner or applicant uh, enter into a section 45 agreement to be registered on title to the satisfaction of the director of planning services and town solicitor. Very well. Ms. McRae, did you catch that all? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Who would like to uh, move a motion? And if, if, if you're not prepared to, I can uh, hand the chair to Mr. Tlowski and I'm happy to move the motion myself. Okay, Mr. T Mr. Hardcastle, go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, having reviewed uh, uh, the written materials, having undertaken my site visit um, and, and heard the information um, in this uh, meeting, I'm prepared to put forward a motion of approval of the variances um, subject to uh, three conditions. Um, uh, noting that uh, that the requested variances with um, with appropriate conditions of approval uh, will be satisfactory and to meet the uh, four tests of the act. Um, I would note um, that. Um, sorry, I'm just checking our sheet. Do we have dates for the plans as submitted um, with this? Um, I, I can I can fill that in. I would note that there were five letters of support received in support of this application, um, and that the um, the approval should be um, subject to the following conditions. The first being that the um, um, proposed cabana. Uh, be constructed in general accordance with the plans submitted. Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm struggling for a date on the site plan. Mr. Hassan, which, what are the latest ones, if you can? Uh, uh, site plan drawing dated May 29th, 2020. Okay. And elevations dated May 27th, 2020. Perfect. Um, and that would include the floor plan as well. Um, uh, so, uh, oh. cabana, proposed cabana be constructed in general accordance with the site plan dated May 29th, 2020, and elevation drawings dated May 27th, 2020. Um, that the um, uh, Variance application will uh, the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a permit has not been issued, and that the owner enter into a section forty five minor variance agreement to the satisfaction of the director of planning services and the town solicitor. Perfect, Ms. McCray, did you get all of that? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. All right. So the motion before us with those three conditions are to approve the application uh, sub subject to 
those three conditions, all those, uh, sorry, Ms. Murray, so go ahead. Follow-up question for town uh, planning staff through you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, currently, we have people that are in support of this. Uh, to planning staff, and uh, I, I know this is a, a tough question and potentially a legal question, uh, what should the balance of these neighbors come forward and expect the same leeway would we legally have to afford that as well and and continue to uh, grant uh, the same variance? For you, Madam Chair, it is a, somewhat of a difficult question to ask because we would review each proposed cabana um, accessory to the pools um, in their own merit, depending on their design and construction, um, but to a degree, and if they were to apply for uh, variance to make them habitable, um, it would be somewhat difficult, um, in my opinion, to kind of detract from that. I guess where I'm getting that answer from is if we compare this to the application that the committee dealt with on Watts Crescent, um, that um, structure was approved as a pool house, and then there was a variance applied for afterwards um, for human habitation, which I believe the committee refused uh, if late last year. I believe it was in November. Um, so that, that was kind of where I, I would draw that answer from. Um, it, one follow-up question to town staff, um, considering the, the potential legal uh, ramifications, um, should this be put on hold pending a legal opinion? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, again, I, I believe it would um, suffice to have a legal opinion. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to give one at this time. Thank you so much. Okay, so we just had a... Um, a pause to the vote. Is there a discussion on this recommendation before we go any further? Ms. Murray. Minor discussion and follow-up, which would be, um, I, I would prefer to have um, uh, independent legal counsel that it for uh, not even independent legal counsel. I realize the panel does not have ILC, but um, if, if we had town staff legal counsel um, weigh in, um, that would give me a greater comfort to vote either way. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to have to vote against this motion as well. Okay. Um, Here you, Madam Chair. Unfortunately, I think there's a power outage in the office that I'm in, oh. so I'm going to try and fix that in one second. Okay. But entering into, while Mr. Hassan is, is, is fixing his technical difficulty, entering into a Section 45 uh, variance agreement would cover the, the town from that legal aspect, correct? Sorry, Madam Chair, I think they're working on it. I heard a question. Um, I'm not sure if it was for me. Or... Yes, I, I, I just wanted you to clarify the, the Section 45 minor variance agreement entering into that would, for all intents and purposes, protect the town from those legal ramifications, correct? Yeah, yeah through you, Madam Chair, there would be um, clauses put into the agreement um, the plans would be tied to said agreement um, and there would be insurances put in place um, in that regard if uh, the um, cabana were to be altered in any way aside from what is approved and to agreed upon in terms of what's registered on title. So much of how like a site plan agreement is structured. Okay. Um, remind me about the, the Watson application that we had uh, uh, discussed. That one had the um, access from a different point, correct? Like it was accessible, whereas this um, cabana is far into the um, the lot 
the owners a lot uh, in the back of the yard. So they would require to create an, an access for it through a driveway or in order for them to have it as a um, habitable accessory building compared to the lots of application that we had uh, looked at, correct? Yeah, to your venture, that, that would be correct. Um, I don't believe there would necessarily need to be a vehicular access. A pedestrian walkway um, would suffice to a degree just because the parking regulations would still need to be met. So um, potentially um, uh, an occupant could park on the main driveway and then just walk potentially to the cabana itself or um, there could be a rear access gate, although it's town property to the south, so that a gate wouldn't be allowed. Uh, yeah. Mr. Wilma, can you put that uh, site plan one more time up? I just want to make sure that we have covered all our bases. Okay. So uh, in the picture that Ms. Murray showed, you have a dotted line, and this is the new, is that the new, f the, the, the fence that lies next to the shed? you were saying that is going to be removed, correct? Or it's going to be changed somehow? Uh, can you hear me? I thought I was muted. Yeah, no, I can't. Now I can. Okay. Um, the, the fence uh, is currently there as the pool enclosure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we haven't completed a, a, a or, or the, the owner hasn't completed a, uh, a landscape design yet, so um, I, I can't confirm or, or not whether that will uh, stay or or not. Um, what is true is that um, the because I mean, I guess all I can say is that there's there there's no intention. There's there's no um, there's no. Uh, uh, room, I, I believe, for uh, additional cars on, on the lot. Um, you know, that, that would be quite a process to, to do that, to, to obtain parking, uh, reasonable parking. And, um, and uh, you know, there's no reasonable access for this to uh, become a dwelling unit. Okay. And in the back there, that's uh, that backs onto town property, correct? It's a trail, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's fenced. <sighs> yes. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Okay, so uh, barring any uh, more um, discussion points, we can uh, vote on the um, motion uh, if there's no more discussion to be raised. I see none. Okay, so the motion before us as Mr. Hardcastle uh, submitted is to approve the application subject to the three conditions that the proposed cabana being constructed in accordance with the site plan uh, dated May 29th and the elevation plans dated May uh, 27th, correct, of 2020, and uh, subject to our standard condition that the approval uh, expires within two years on date of decision if the building permit has not been issued or a proposed construction been completed. And then the third one is that the applicant um, enters into a section 45 minor variance agreement subject to the satisfaction of the director of planning as, as stated on record before. I'm, I'm doing this verbatim because I don't have them written fully, but I just want to refresh our memory before we actually vote. Um, all those in support of this motion? Okay. Uh, all those opposed? Okay. So the application has been uh, been approved with with two opposed being Ms. Murray and Mr. Uh, Talowski. Uh, Ms. McRae, you're still with us? Uh, yes. Okay, so the application has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Wilmot. Thank you. Okay. So, um, all right. Application CAV 059 of 2020 at 253 Gatewick Drive. Okay. So we ask at this time that anyone interested in speaking to this matter, CAV 059 of 2020 at 253 Gatewick Drive, 
to call in the number 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The phone number is also posted on the screen below the live stream at oakville.ca. Uh, staff will be standing by to take your call and we'll give you further instructions uh, to join the video conference at that time. Ms. McRae, do we have the agent standing by for this application? Uh, the homeowner is on is standing by. Okay, homeowner. Uh, that would be Mr. and Mrs. McIntyre. Correct. Uh, can you hear me at all? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you now. We can't see you, but we can, can hear you. you. I'm not sure how to. I'm on my phone. I had been um, watching. Oh, here we go. Start video. Yes. There you go. Can you see me now? Perfect. Okay. And so I'm at work. My husband's at home. I don't know if he's joining as well. Uh, Ms. McRae, if there is uh, someone else, then that would be my him. Um, so we have one minor variance request. Um, if you have our slide presentation, the slide one, please. Okay, right, so our fully fenced backyard is sandwiched between our house and our laneway garage, we're the middle one there. Instead of the 1.5 meter bylaw setback, we're requesting a 0 0.5 meter setback from our west lot line for our backyard hot tub. The red rectangle is the hot tub located 1.5 meters from the west lot line, and the blue rectangle is our requested 0 0.5 meter. Slide two, please. Uh, this is a photograph of our backyard from above with the hot tub located 1.5 meters from the west lot line. Slide three, please. This is a photograph looking from our garage toward our house with the hot, uh, hot tub set back 1.5 meters. Slide four, please. This is a photograph from above with the hot tub at our proposed 0 0.5 meter setback from the west lot line. Slide five, please. Uh, this is a photograph looking from our house toward our garage. The green hot tub is locating at our uh, proposed 0 0.5 meter setback and the red line shows the hot tub with the 1.5 meter setback. Slide six, please. This is a photograph looking from our garage to our house with a hot tub at the proposed 0 0.5 meter setback. Slide seven, please. This is a photograph of the west lot line looking from our house towards the laneway gate. Our old uh, trampoline is approximately the same size and proposed location of our new hot tub. So no more slides required at this point. Um, we have spoken to our neighbors and uh, specifically ones on either side as well as the ones past that and uh, we have received the support of, uh, of them including uh, written sign but I didn't put it in this presentation I submitted it with the application. Yes we do have those letters on on record. Are there any questions? Are there any questions of Ms. McIntyre at this time? Ms. Murray? I am Ms. McIntyre. Thank you very much for the presentation. I just have a quick question. Um, did I get the dimensions right? Uh, the hot tub is seven, seven and a half by 14? Yes, it is. Okay, so is this a lap pool, a lap pool or a hot tub? It is, uh, so it is a hot tub that's also a swim spot. So it's a, it's classified as a hot tub, as a hot tub with a lockable lid. It fits all the parameters. And I, in my application, I submitted a, the drawing and the um, dimensions label in there. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, follow up question to town staff. Uh, does town staff have um, uh, definitions with regards to hot tub versus pool in terms of dimensions? Through you, Madam Chair, I don't believe there's specifications on the dimensions. It's just the setback in relation to Section 4161A of the uh, of the zoning bylaw for its setback requirement in an interior side yard. Thank you for the clarification. No more questions. Any further questions or items of clarification? 
I see none. Okay. Uh, if Ms. Mc Ms. McIntyre, if you're satisfied, we can take the matter into committee now. Yes. Um, who would like to move a motion? Ms. Murray, go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, having conducted my site visit, reviewed the applicant's uh, written submission, and I, I note, thank you, uh, Ms. McIntyre, the, um, uh, the depiction and the photos are very helpful to paint a very clear picture, so thank you very much for that. Um, uh, thank you for um, all the work that you've done there, and, and noting that there, uh, uh, according to yourself, um, the, there, there are no um, written or oral objections at this point in time, um, but potentially some support from the neighbors. Um, I'm satisfied that the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for variance subject to the following conditions, um, which is that the hot tub slash lap pool be built in general accordance with the submitted schematics submitted with the application and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if the building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Oh, sorry, sorry. I just have, Miss, can I just, on the condition she read out, Miss Murray said. She said hot, hot tub and lap pool. So she added that in. Slash. Yeah. Are we, are, is that to be added to the condition uh, recommended by planning? Uh, at, at, this, at this point in time, because there are no strict definitions, I think it's important to delineate that. Mr. Hassan, you have a, yes, um, Mr. Hardcastle, you had your hand up, sorry. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask a question through you to to staff um, whether the inclusion of the of the phrase lap pool would change the zoning provisions as it applied to this, or whether it would be um, uh, um, uh, more appropriate to leave it as hot tub to avoid any uh, um, um, mis different interpretation in terms of setback requirements. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, I would tend to agree with Member Hardcastle as the requested variance is to permit the hot tub to be set back 0 0.5 meters from the Westlake interior side lot line. So that would be the terminology that is specific to the zoning bylaw. Okay, thank you for that clarification. So, Ms. Murray, would you accept that amendment? Happy to amend. Thank you. So noted. Okay, perfect. Ms. McRae, you're okay with that? Yes, it'll read as planning recommended that the hot tub be built in general accordance with the submitted schematic submitted with the application. Very well, thank you. Duly noted. All those in support of the uh, application being approved, okay, um, and none opposed. Very well, your application has been approved. Thank you, Ms. McIntyre. Thank you. Okay. The, uh, Last item on our agenda for this evening is CAV 060 at 417 Union Street. Once again, the application that we are dealing with is 060 at 417 Union Street. Please call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095 should you um, like to speak to the application uh, on hand. Staff will be uh, on hand to um, take your call and provide you with further instructions as to how to join the video conference at that time. Okay, so we have the agent on standby for this application. That is correct. Okay. Are they on the phone or are they video streaming? No, they should be on. It's Mr. Van Kulen, Curtis Van Kulen. He's um, should be with us. Okay, I see him now. Good evening, Mr. Van Kulen. Good evening, Madam Chair. I apologize. Okay. Okay, so I, uh, again, my name is Curtis Van Kulen from Hughes Design Studio. Um, I am before you guys this evening to discuss uh, 417 Union Street. It is a 
new two-story detached dwelling with an attached garage. Um, it is going to be in place of an exist, excuse me, an existing single-story uh, brick dwelling. Um, and uh, we originally had an application for this project as applied for in May of 2016. Uh, due to unforeseen circumstances and complexities in the owner's life, we have uh, that that actually was approved and then lapsed. So we have brought that forth in front of the committee again. And there were through drawing development, there were some minor tweaks to the proposal that increased the uh, the lot coverage by a, about uh, 0.5-ish of a percentage. Um, so a minor tweak in that. Um, that was due to the complexity of the roof structure, um, clarification of the walk-in closet uh, in the roof structure, um, the ceiling heights and the way that the floor plan worked. Um, they wanted, obviously, to amend that slightly and then it uh, affected the lot coverage of a, a rear uh, covered porch that is not really visible from the street. Um, there are a few comments on the design of the project. Um, it's modest and simplified in design. It uh, echoes some um, craftsman style uh, arts and crafts uh, architecture which is repeated in the district. Um, it has uh, low slope gables and truncated dormers, again, reflecting the architecture of the area. Um, just down the street, there's a good example of a similar structure at the corner of First and Union. Um, so all in all, the built form itself um, is developed within you know, the height and scale of the area. It's uh, compatible with all of the other uh, zoning regulations, uh, the height, the setbacks, et cetera. Um, uh, again, it, very minimal impact on surrounding areas with this uh, requested variance due to the the design of the home. Um, and again, it's the intent to prevent, uh, you know, overage in lot coverage and construction of the committee of adjustment and, and the zoning bylaw, obviously. And uh, we're doing our very best to try to keep that very, very minimal in nature. Um, and again, it, you know, the scale of the overall house keeps in... Uh, keeping with the district context. So uh, if there's anything further, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have, uh, but that's basically the, the proposal here before you today. Very well. Um, staff did recommend a condition that cited a minor heritage permit. Um, where are you at with that, pers that respect? Yes, so uh, through uh, Madam Chair, um, we received on June 4th, 2019, we received an extension to our heritage permit that was originally approved. Uh, it subsequently expired, but then on, like I said, June 4th, 2019, we received an extension and that expires June 4th, 2021. Uh, we have construction drawings ready to go and we're just waiting for this to apply for the building permit. So it is full intention that the building permit will be issued this year and construction will start either this year or early next year. Very well, thank you. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Van Kloon at this time? I see none. Very well, Mr. Van Kloon, if you're satisfied with your uh, submission, we are ready to take the matter into committee. Mr. Talowski, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, this is a beautifully designed house that is completely in character with the neighborhood. The variance being requested is very minor and I don't see it having any impact at all on the neighborhood. Uh, so I would move that this application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. We would make that approval conditional on the dwelling being constructed in general accordance with the June 29th, 2020 site plan, June 1st, 2020 elevations, and that a building permit issue within two. Very well, thank you, Mr. Zalowski. Is there a um, discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Van Kuhn. Have a good evening. You too. Uh, 
Um, we have minutes to confirm for July the 7th. Who would like to move the minutes? Thank you, Ms. Murray. Ms. Murray moved the minute. And then motion for adjournment. Mr. Hardcastle, thank you. Motion to adjourn at 8.30 p.m.